This is devotional number 316, and today's date is August 28th, 2017. We are going to take a look at the word everlasting uh, in both the Old and the New Testament. And I'd like to start by uh, looking at the flood account. After God destroyed the entire world uh, by the flood in 4990 BC, God tells the following to Noah in Genesis 9, 11 through 17. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. We want to take a look at this uh, word everlasting covenant. The word for covenant is Strong's number 1285, and the word for in the Hebrew, and the word for everlasting is 5769. In Psalm 105, 8 through 10, God alludes to this everlasting covenant as he spoke to Abraham and to his physical descendants, Isaac and Jacob, and really by extension to all true Christians. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. We also read in Isaiah 24, 5, where the covenant was broken. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. And the word for broken is Strong's number 6565. And this statement, of course, is certainly true of all mankind with respect to their sin. But we also see where God abandoned the churches and denominations as of May 21, 1988, because of their sin. And then that judgment, which began at the house of God, according to 1 Peter 4:17 then transitioned to the world at large as of May 21, 2011. And now the world uh, no longer has the, the opportunity uh, for salvation because God fulfilled the temple. In other words, all the elect that, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life were brought in. Uh, this word transgress is also found in 1 Samuel 2.24, where Eli's two sons, Eli was the high priest, uh, Hophni and Phinehas, were guilty of violating God's word, and so was Eli for not dis disciplining them. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. 
ye make Jehovah's people to transgress. And that whole account with Eli and his two sons and the ark of God being um, taken uh, by the Philistines, the, the light in the temple that was always to be lit uh, went out. All of these are, it's one gigantic parable having to do with the end of the church age. And of course, the law that is always being transgressed is God's law. It's, it's the Bible, as Proverbs 6.23 maintains, for the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of, ins of instruction are the way of life. In Exodus 18.20, we also read, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Uh, this again is another reference to the laws of the Bible that man in his innate sinfulness always tries to change because of his rebellion against God. We also learned from Isaiah 24, 5, that the everlasting covenant or the gospel, which is the entire Bible, has been broken. And the Hebrew word for broken uh, is uh, Strong's number 6565. And it's also translated, for they have made void uh, in Psalm 119, 126. It is time for thee, Jehovah, to work, for they have made void thy law. And in Galatians 1, 6 through 9, we also read, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Isaiah 55.3 carefully explains that one has to hear the gospel or covenant with spiritual ears that only God could supply during the day of salvation. Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And of course, we know that David is a great type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Isaiah 61, eight through 11, we find this announcement regarding the salvation program of God's, which is God's prerogative completely. For I, Jehovah, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which Jehovah hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Jehovah. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations.